everyone, my name is Jennifer Stay. This is Coloring Bliss and welcome to a product review, a mega product review. How's That's that, Steve? Right. <laughs> <laughs> I've got Steve here, my business partner and husband, and we have mega color pencils. These are the Brevelliers Create a Color Color Pencils. Uh, we'll talk about the name here in just a minute, but not just one package of them. I have two because they have metallics, you guys. So we're going to try both of these. And I bought the special little sharpener that goes along with them. And I will talk about whether you need this um, to go along with these mega pencils. Why are they mega? How do they compare to standard, standard color pencils? Let's swatch them. Let's color with them. Let's see what makes these mega. All right, these are the two sets of color pencils we're going to be looking at today. The name brand, I believe, is Brevelliers. Um, comment below if you think I got that wrong. And the line is called Creticolor, Creticolor. Comment below, how would you pronounce that name right there? Um, it probably is gonna come out of my, my mouth in a couple different ways as I go through this video. So yeah, create a color, create a color. What do you think, Steve? I would say create a color. Create a color, so okay. So it sounds more like create a color. <laughs> All right, so color. <laughs> I think it's a cool name. I just don't know exactly how I'm supposed to pronounce it. So um, these pencils come in, let's see, this particular line comes in either 12, 24, or 36 sets and open stock. So this is their stand pencils if you can call a mega pencil standard just wait till you see this pencil you guys it's so cool um, and they're reasonably priced it's pretty cool now this line the metallics or the brilliance as they're calling it only comes in a set of 12 so we're going to swatch all both sets here we're going to swatch them on white we're going to swatch them on black both sets to see how they perform. Cannot wait to see, but let's take a look at these beauties first. Cool thing about these pencils, they're being made in Austria, which is really cool to me. Not China or um, Taiwan, but Austria. Isn't that neat? So lots of information here on the back, including the fact that they're made in Austria. Um, but of course, the reason we're here is that they are mega. So let's look at that. It comes in a nice tin. Here they are. Oh. Now I can see the hinge on my tin is already busted. This is kind of a common problem um, with some tins. So I'm not gonna like say anything bad about that. You know, it is what it is. Some of these tins are better than others. So um, we've got some nice information here about some of their other products. So Creticolor has a lot of, or Brevelliers, I guess is the line. And then they have a lot of different products. So yeah, you can check it all out here, all the different things they create. And here they are, these giant wow. pencils. I'm gonna pull purple out because I'm a purple girl. Wow. <laughs> Look at that. So one of the concerns I have is how does it feel to color with a giant pencil in your hand? Does my hand get more tired? Maybe it's going to be easier. All these questions I have right away, we can see we've got the name on it, it says Mega Color on it, the country of origin on it, and then on the other side, awesome, we've got a color name and some number information. All easy to read, they did not use metallic on any of it, so my eyes say thank you to Criticolor for using no metallic writing on their pencils. It's a really pretty pencil and it's not that heavy. I kind of was worried that it would feel like, oh, you know, this is a chore, but <laughs> it, it's not. You want to feel, Steve? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's not a beefy, heavy tool. Let me show you in comparison to a, you know, kind of more standard size pencil. This is Prismacolor Premier 36 set here. So let's go ahead and pull out a purple out of here so you can see the size difference lengthwise. They're identical. Neither one of these have been sharpened, so they're straight from manufacturer length here. And then you can see this direction, <laughs> the difference between oh, wow. a standard size. So uh, Prismacolor Core, let me get this exactly right, is a 3.8 millimeter core. And the um, core here on the Criticolor is a 6.4. Can you see it good enough? Am I holding it still enough? 
I don't know, the end cap here has been dipped in a color where Prismacolor has them open. So that's the difference. It's huge. Almost double the amount of material, right? Yeah. Almost. 6.4 core. So almost two of these cores in one of these right here. So when you do the per pencil price breakdown, let's talk numbers real quick, okay? This set right here, this 12 set, costs me um, from dickblick.com $16.47 on dickblick.com a 12 set of Prismacolor pencils costs $15.28 so per pencil in a 12 pack a Prismacolor pencil is $1.27 and this pencil is $1.37 so there's only a 10 cent more for all that more product in the center. Now, whether it's the same quality and all that, we're going to kind of find out the feel and everything as we're coloring along. Now, um, this set here costs anywhere between 30 and $38, depending on where you're shopping and all of that. Of course, this is all USA prices here. Um, the full set of Prismacolors, that's 150 pencils right now as of May 2021. It's costing anywhere between $125 and $135, which brings these down to 83 cents per pencil. Now, these are also, um, you can get them cheaper per pencil if you buy a bigger set. And yes, they are available open stock on dickblick.com. Now, the brilliant let's bring those up and let you see those this is what the brilliance look like Ooh, I haven't even taken them out of the plastic yet so when you originally buy them this set here they come wrapped in plastic like this so I haven't even swatched these I know I've colored a little bit with these but not much as you can tell by the amount of wear on the tips. So let's take the plastic off of this. Okay, I got the plastic off of there and ooh, that smell that comes off of brand new pencils. It's not that yucky, you know, um, some pencils have like a, even Rose is smelling it, she smelled it too. It's a nice wood smell, it smells good. It's not a bad plasticky. Um, there's some Chinese pencils that I've opened that have a nasty smell. These didn't have that smell. Oh, they smell like creativity. Okay. <laughs> All right, so that's the color selection. I can't wait to see them swatched. Um, let's make sure. Oh, we got to look at purple. Okay. Blooming Viola. Ooh, beautiful name. Again, no metallic writing. Thank you so much, Create a Color, for doing that for me. I know you, you knew I wanted that, so that's why you did that. Okay, so that's the pencils um, and what they look like in general. Now, when you buy them, it's recommended, if you look at the back, um, 36 high, um, the Mega Colors, it says, for perfect results, use the Create a Color Mega Duo Sharpener. So it does recommend that you purchase their separate sharpener. That's this little guy right here. Now their sharpener is $3.27 on dickblick.com. So I went ahead and bought it. I kind of wondered if I could get away with just using my comb sharpener get that shaving off of there. This is my um, one of my favorite sharpeners right here. It's by Coom. has two holes on it and I kind of was like, yeah, that sharpener right there, that should do it. That's a big sharpener. I've never really needed it before. That's the one that's going to work. So as we're going along here today, that's one of the first things I want to test. Did I need to buy their brand specific sharpener or could I have gotten away with my Coom sharpener? So I'm going to answer that question for you here in a minute but Steve's been doing a little math for us what did you find out Steve about the difference between the core <clears throat> of you know the the percentage how I much think, more do I we think get it's about 70 percent more so we get 70 percent more core more waxy stuff to color with in a Krita color pencil versus a standard 3.8 millimeter cord pencil 
70% more. That's pretty cool. I like that. Okay, let's get to the swatching montage. You're going to watch me swatch it on both white and black paper. Today I'm going to be swatching in these two books right here. Now, I've had Steve print me two of these Volume 1 Swatch Bliss books. We have lots of different kinds of swatching books. These ones I call my swatching catalog because they have all the same size swatching squares. So let me show you what it looks like as you swatch into them. They have 60 swatches per page. So all in all, in this one book, I can do 3,600 swatches, okay? And I had him print this book on color pencil paper. That's why I have it written down here. So I remember this is color pencil paper. Of course, there is a page in here to remind me to all about the color pencil paper. And then I had him print this one on our new beautiful black paper. Look at that. And you can see all the swatch. Hopefully you can see that in the camera light. Yeah, you can see that. So I'm going to be swatching this, these beautiful pencils on both because at the end I want to do some coloring on our black paper with these two types of pencils. Here's all the information about our black paper in case you're interested. So these books are both available including, um, we have lots of other kinds of swatch books. So if a cataloging type swatching isn't what you're looking for, uh, follow the link in the video description and come and see the other types of swatch bliss books that we create. Okay, cue the music montage. Let's see what these pencils look like on paper. Okay, I thought we would take a quick break here from the swatching to take a look at how they look on white so far. So the top two rows are the Mega Duo standard ones, the Mega Color Pencils, and the bottom two rows are the Brilliants. Now, what I wanna check here, and get a brush to get rid of the crumbs. Uh, a couple comments right away. The colors are very vivid. The pencils feel very comfortable in my hands. They're a hex pencil, which I like. It feels really good in my hand. Um, so far, I have no complaints about the large size. I don't feel like uh, it's uncomfortable or anything, so that's really great. I'm still anxious to try the sharpening and see what kind of result we get from that. There are some crumbs coming off of the core. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Maybe up here by Matter Carmine, you can kind of see the crumbs. A little bit down here by Sparkling Clouds, you can see. Up by Violet, you can see. It's not a lot of crumbs. I'm not mad at it, but there are crumbs. The feel of the pencil is sort of, it's not exactly really creamy, but it's not really hard. It's sort of a dry type of a feel. That's probably my best word for it, but it's not scratchy. There's not a scratchy feel to it, um, but it's not a silky feel like a polychromos. It's not a creamy feel like a Prismacolor. It's kind of its own creature, um, and I'm not mad at it so far. I'm very interested about how it's going to blend between the different colors, and we'll find that out as we get into the coloring part. Um, the the Brilliance colors down here have a lovely vintage feel. Are they metallic-y shiny? That's my next question. So let me get rid of the crumbs that we've created. I just use a makeup brush to do that. I don't use my hand because my hand is usually pretty hot and I don't wanna smear any pigment or color as I do that. Let's move this in the light and see if the bottom two rows catch the studio light and if we have any shine. Typically, uh, 
brilliant metallic type color pencil will perform better on black paper. So this is kind of a hard test for a color pencil that is a metallic color pencil, but I do want to see how it's performing so far. The gold one is pretty good. That starry, starry night is good. Um, the sparkling clouds, not sh much shine on it. And it, if anything, it's coming across more of a waxy bloom type shine than it is like a metallic shine. But like I said, um, most metallic color pencils struggle really a lot on white paper. I do adore the names of the colors in the Brilliance um, lineup. Go for Gold, Dripping Honey, Forbidden Fruit, Electric Ruby, Enchanted Forest, Marvelous Mint, Sparkling Clouds, Touch of Midnight, Blooming Viola, Cotton Candy, Starry Starry Night, and Misty Day. I think they're all just so much fun. I had a lot of fun as I was reading those. So yeah, we are catching the light a little bit. I cannot wait to see all of these on the black paper. So let's do some more swatching. I've got the standard mega colored pencils all swatched onto the black and wow that's pretty cool looking. You can also see the crumbs I was talking about a little bit better here on the black. Not too bad but some of the pencils are definitely a little more crummy than other pencils. So pretty. I love to see the colors on black. Now, of course, these pencils were not formulated to go on to black. Um, we're just using them that way. So I want to swatch them on black so that I can see how they're going to perform. For instance, look, on, look at that cadmium citron. It looks totally different on black than it does on white. It's the white shining up through the colors and the pigments. And here the black is, uh, you know, interacting with the colors and giving you a totally different look. So it's it's really important when you are coloring that you swatch onto the paper that you're using so you can see how it's going to perform. Whether it's the texture of the paper or the color of the paper, it will change the way your tool performs. Okay, now comes the fun part. Let's see what the metallics are going to do on this black paper. If you enjoy swatching as much as I do, make sure you have subscribed to our channel and hit that little notification bell because I am planning a big swatching video coming up soon where I am going to be swatching a ton of different kinds of art media into my black swatching book that you're watching me use right now. I'm going to be swatching gel pens, color pencils, paints, gel crayons, all kinds of mediums, even pastels to see how they behave on black paper. It's really exciting to see how these different mediums that we're very accustomed to using on white paper, how do they behave on black? I'm really excited about this video, so make sure you subscribe. And if you like this content, don't forget, right now is a great time to hit that like button. Okay, we've got the brilliance all swatched out. I'm going to remove the few little crumbs that we have. Again, just minor crumbs. Um, and let's see how they look. Um, I think they performed even better on the black, which is kind of what I was expecting um, because again, metallics typically do better on black when it comes to colored pencils. And let's, oh yeah, see so much more payoff with the shine on the black. Now we're talking. Oh, I'm excited to color with these. Okay, let's do a side-by-side -side comparison. Let me get my face off of here with the white swatches and the black swatches so you can see the difference. Now, heads up, I did do a little mistake here. Matter Carmine and Violet are switched up here on the top row. Other than that, it's a side-by-side -side comparison across the whole thing. Colors I'm really impressed by. Ivory black, that is a gorgeous black. 
really deep, delicious black. Very impressed. White is decent. Um, we need to do another battle of the white color pencils. We did one a couple years ago and I have a lot more contenders we can do now and I think it's time we bring out the whites again and see if we have a new winner. My current favorite white is this guy right here. Derwent drawing Chinese white, he's really good, but there's a lot that he would have to go up against right now, and that one is pretty good. Okay, but look how gorgeous these brilliants are on the black, but they are also really pretty, very vintagey vibe over here on the white as well. So overall, I'm very impressed with the Cretacolor um, Mega Color pencils. They feel good in my hand, vivid colors. Um, they shine really pretty on the black, which is what I expected. A little bit of shine on the white, but very impressive on the black. So I think the next step that we need to do is actually get in and do some blending, some coloring, see how they um, behave in an actual coloring situation and get some wear going on some of these pencils so that we can test the little color pencil sharpener that um, they asked us to purchase to use hand in hand with these pencils because I still wonder if this was necessary. Now it wasn't an expensive sharpener and it does have two holes so I'm wondering if the second hole will be handy for a standard pencil like my Prismacolors because that would be nice to have a nice new sharpener for that. So yeah we still need to test him out too. So the book I'm going to be coloring in is this one right here. This is Mandala Bliss Volume 5. It's available, um, there's a link in the video description. This one was drawn by me. And it's full of mandalas that are very simply drawn. So they have a big, large spaces that you can get in and really experiment with. So if you have a new coloring tool that you're working with, or maybe you don't have the best eyesight and you don't want to be working with teeny tiny little details, or maybe you just want a simple mandala that you can can get in, throw some colors down without having to make a ton of decisions. Well, the simple mandalas are where it's at. I love coloring mandalas because you make a few color decisions and then you sit down and you just relax and follow all those color decisions around the mandala and it's very zen-like and very meditative and very blissful. So that's why we call it Mandala Bliss. So this is volume five, my latest book that I've drawn and I had Steve print this on the black paper. So I've colored a couple in here, this one here, and then recently we did one with bleach, if you caught that video. I'll have Steve put a link to the bleach one where we colored with bleach and then I put some metallic paint on top. That was really fun. So I'm gonna thumb through here and pick out a mandala that I feel inspired by today. And I'm gonna get started coloring with these um, colored pencils, the mega color pencils. And and I'll pop in here in just a minute and kind of give you an update on the color choices that I've made and how I'm feeling about coloring with the Mega Color Pencils in Mandala Bliss Volume 5. I absolutely love coloring with color pencils. They are so much fun. I can get beautiful shadows, beautiful highlights, blends, almost anything I want to do, I can do with color pencils. If you would like to learn more about how to color with color pencils, we have an amazing four-part workshop series called the Color Pencil Fast Track. It will take you from beginner to advanced coloring skills, lots of worksheets and tips and tricks, I'd love to have you join us with a I'd love to have you join us. It's so much fun. It's with the Bliss Partner Program over at Coloring Bliss. So just follow the link in the video description and come learn how to color with color pencils. One of the things I have fallen in love with as I've been coloring with these pencils is the sound they make as I've been coloring with them. Listen to this. Because they're bigger, they have a different sound than any of my other pencils. So as I'm rotating between pencils and going from light to medium to dark and dark to medium to light, they just make such a pleasing 
sound. It kind of reminds me of those wood chimes that are, uh, the wind chimes that are made of wood. That's what it reminds me of. I'm really enjoying these. So much fun. Okay, so I've had some time here to color with both the brilliance and a little bit with the standard ones, the mega colors, I guess is what they're calling it. And I have to say I'm really impressed. <laughs> they're yeah. really fun. And I, because these pencils are so big, I feel like I can really lean in and burnish. Burnish is when you push really hard with the pencil. With metallic colors, you want to get to that burnishing um, layer pretty quickly because that's when you're going to get your biggest shine payoff. So what I decided on this um, mandala is I'm going to kind of do a fire and ice theme is the idea. So I'm going to do a lot of blue as the ice um, idea and then I'm going to have little pops of sort of red and red oranges for the fire. Um, it's a good complementary color type color scheme so there won't be a lot of fire it'll be mostly ice type feeling. Um, that's my plan and so with the ice I'm using three colors from the brilliance. I'm using, oh as I throw them, I'm using Touch of Midnight, Sparkling Clouds, and Misty Day. And so to get that good shine, I want to really lean in and get that burnishing pressure. And sometimes with pencils, if you're really leaning in, sometimes I'm like, oh my word, am I going to bust this pencil? Because <laughs> you're really leaning in, you know. Not these pencils. You can just manhandle these pencils really good and not worry about them. So I'm getting beautiful blends. These little blue sapphire gems that I was coloring here in the middle, I used these three colors, Ultramarine from the Mega Color set, so the standard 12 and I used uh, light blue and then I was able to put a white highlight on top with white color pencil. Now if you've ever done any coloring with color pencil you know how hard it is to put a white highlight on top of color pencil with color pencil. It's almost impossible. Usually you have to reach for a gouache or a gel pen or some other type of liquid like a Posca paint pen to get that white highlight. These little white highlights I put on these gems was with this white, permanent white color pencil. That's pretty impressive, you guys. <laughs> now, I am on black paper, so it's easier to get a white highlight on black paper. So I did set myself up for success there, you guys, I must admit. But still, check out those little blue sapphires in the middle. Blending those two blues together was a dream super easy so those little sapphires were super easy oh, that's fun now look at the shine yeah, i noticed that when you Ooh. picked it up <laughs> <laughs> so i could probably keep coming in and burnishing more to up the shine even more that's how metallic color pencils work the more you burnish, the more shine you get, the more metallic payoff. So, but, okay, so a couple things to look at. The shine and look at the blend I was able to achieve between the three colors. Really good. So these pencils are blending well. They feel good in the hand. We're getting metallic payoff. I mean, what more can you ask for in a pencil? 
That's pretty cool. Yeah. So I think the final test that we need to do is the sharpening test to see how easy they sharpen because these are big boys. So how do they sharpen? If you want to see the final coloring page, um, I'm going to keep working on this to get the whole fire and ice theme completed. And I'll put the finished coloring pages on my Instagram and probably on my Facebook page as well. Links to both of those will be in the video description. So come and see how the fire and ice theme turned out. I'll probably even move it in the light a little bit so you can see how the finished metallics all look. But let's finally, I've been teasing you about this through this whole video, let's finally give this test, uh, this little sharpener, a test. So we don't really need to um, sharpen these three guys yet. These are from the Mega Color Set. Haven't hardly touched these. I mean, I did all of that and haven't needed to sharpen these three yet. That's how long these cores are lasting. So I think these pencils are going to last me a very long time. Oh, that's a great value. So here I have the two sharpeners. This was the one I was hoping would work, um, but then I broke down and bought the actual brand specific pencil sharpener. Wow. <laughs> so let's first of all, just put it in here and see. It may work in the coom, you guys. Let's see. I've got a little dish where I collect my sharpen my shavings. I collect shavings, you guys. I think they're beautiful. I put them in jars. I don't know how many jars. I think I have close to eight full jars now. <laughs> it kind of like gives me a sense of accomplishment, how much coloring I do. <laughs> so let's see. I don't want to hurt them. Yeah, I think... It would work in the big hole in the two hole coom sharpener. So I've got a link to the coom sharpener and a link to the actual brand specific mega sharpener um, in the video description if you decide to buy these. I'm gonna try both and see. Proper way to sharpen a color pencil. You hold the pencil sharpener still and move the sharpener around it. That's the best way to do it to protect the core, okay? So that's what I'm doing here. The reason I like the Coom is because it has such a good blade. It's all about the blade. It has not so much to do about the body of the sharpener. It's all about the blade. These blades on the Coom are from Germany. So they're really good. Wow. Okay, I'm gonna stop there. That worked really good. Look at those shavings, aren't they beautiful? <laughs> I gotta bring them up to the camera so you can see those beautiful shavings that we got from that. Isn't that pretty? Oh, I just think shavings are beautiful. <laughs> okay, so that big hole in the dual hold coom sharpener will work. But let's see if this one's better. Okay, so this one has two holes again. So I wanna test a Prismacolor in here and I wanna test their pencil in here. So we'll put this one in here, which definitely needs some sharpening and see how it feels. I like that it has a reservoir to catch sharp shavings. So if I'm just, you know, working at my, at my sofa or in a doctor's office, we'll be good to go. I'm looking to see if these, usually the blades will say Germany on them. They don't say Germany on them. So I don't know where this is coming from. There's no indication at all. That makes me a little nervous. Typically any blades that don't say Germany wear out really fast. <laughs> so nothing against any other blade manufacturers from around the other places around the world, but I'm partial to my German blades. <laughs> Okay, again, just hold your, your pencil still. Even a cheap Chinese blade will work decent for a while. It's just how long will it work good? That's the, the question. So I won't know until I've used this for a while. And I will, I'll put it to a test for a while. It feels good right now. I have no complaints right now. It will be, you know, 50 sharpenings in. Will it still be sharp? That will be the question. Okay, let's compare the two. So this blue one is the Coom. The more gray one is the actual um, Krita color one. 
they look identical. Maybe a little bit more exposed um, core here. So this might be slightly different angle. Let me bring it up to camera so you can see. I think oh, yeah. a slightly different angle on the Krita color blade. Okay, let's look at the... Which would you prefer? Well, like I said, this one's nice because I could take it to a doctor's office or throw it in my art bag and it will hold the mm. shavings. Although it's not holding a lot. Look, one pencil shaved and it's looking pretty full because, <laughs> you know, that's a big pencil. That's a <clears throat> what big I meant boy. was, um, do you like the more elongated oh. shape of the sharpened? Okay, now just a second. Look at that. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I, I'm not going to answer your question for a second, Steve, because we all have to have a moment of of appreciation for that curl check her out oh she broke that is an epic curl <laughs> okay that makes a girl happy all right um i don't really care whether you you expose more or less of the core typically if you expose more of the core that means there's more core to break so if you have a really soft cord pencil like the prismacolor pencil then you have more chance to break the core so so far i feel like this is a pretty hard cord pencil so i'm not too nervous about that okay so that's my impression. You could get away with your coom. If you have a coom, you're okay. You don't need to invest in this little guy right here, but he's he's decent. He's good, but I won't know until I've tested him a lot. Let's go ahead and sharpen one of my Prismacolor pencils in the other hole to see how it goes. Um, this purple one here needs some sharpening, so we'll go ahead and do that one and see how it goes. Okay, again, hold your Prismacolor pencil nice and still and move that sharpener around it. That feels a little wobbly, but we'll give it... Sometimes when you're sharpening it for the first time from the manufacturer, it won't seat correctly into whatever sharpener you're using because it's going in at a different and creating a new angle to your pencil. So it just takes a second to get going. So yeah, that second hole on this sharpener will work for your standard colored pencils. So that's good. So this little sharpener is, um, you know, for the price, it's a good little sharpener. It will do both your standard and your giant, big, mega color pencils. So that will work really good. So I'm, I don't feel like I wasted my money buying this, but it kind of is a duplicate from the Coom and I can wholeheartedly recommend the Coom because I have used the Coom for many years and I know that those German blades on the Coom will last you a really long time. So I can very confidently recommend the Coom, but this one is so far, after sharpening two pencils, works fine, um, but I won't know how long that blade is going to last until I've really put it through its paces. So, my final thoughts on the Krita Color pencil set is that I really like them. I think it's a good value for the money. Of course, there's not as many colors available with the Krita Color as there are with, say, a Prismacolor set. Um, but they are really fun. They feel good in the hand. They color good. They blend good. A little bit of crumbs. They're not a super soft pencil, so if you like a really creamy soft pencil like a Prismacolor, that's not the experience you're going to have here. Um, but still, they're really fun, and I love that you get a good value of a lot of core, a lot of color product in one pencil. That's really cool. So I think if you have a little extra money and you're looking for something new and different to purchase to try, these could be on your wish list to purchase. Just make sure you have an appropriate sharpener so that you're not stuck with no way to sharpen your pencils. So either the Coom or their actual um, the Creed Color Sharpener will work good for you for that purpose. So thank you for joining me. Make sure you check out all the
the links in the video description and check out especially my Instagram for the finished product that I will be working on to show you how it turns out my fire and ice mandala. So thanks everybody for joining us and I hope you have a wonderful, colorful, blissful day. Bye-bye everyone!